Do you want to know what one of the most used words in spoken French is? It's quoi. 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 It's probably a word that hasn't been covered extensively in your French school lessons, n'est-ce pas? It is a filler word like you have in English and us French people rely on those filler words even though sometimes we wish we didn't all the time when speaking. In English, the most common filler words I observed are like, um, and yeah. In my French family, my dad uses bon a lot. Bon, bon. It's the equivalent of well in English. My mom uses non mais, which can be really annoying and I will tell you why later. And myself, I sound, it seems like a 90s teenager from LA, which I didn't know because I use like in French, it's genre, genre. In the next 10 minutes, you will learn how to instantly recognize and how to use the 10 most used French filler words, including which filler word is more correct depending on your age. If you don't know these filler words, you are probably getting stuck in the middle of conversations because of them. Let's fix that in the next 10 minutes. I'm Geraldine, let's dive in. The most common French filler word is E. e. It is exactly like the English um. We use it when we're looking for what to say next, but we want to fill up the silence. Filler words are also called des tics de langage, language tics. Des tics de langage. Repeat after me. E. E. Yes, it's a very closed mouth. E. Good. Tiens, tiens, literally means hold on or take this. There's a silent S at the end of tiens and you have the nasal un sound. Tiens, repeat after me. Tiens, tiens, tiens. When we use it as a filler, it is to grab someone's attention, such as take this example or, oh, that's surprising. So when your friend is saying, tiens, il pleut, she means, oh, it's raining. She's not asking you to take or hold anything. Tu vois, tu vois is also used as a filler. It is the exact same as you see, or see. All in all, it is used in the same way as you see in English. It's not always used literally. It can simply mean, please understand what I'm saying. For example, j'ai pas le temps là, tu vois? I don't have the time for this right now, you see? J'ai pas le temps là, tu vois? Repeat after me. J'ai pas le temps là, tu vois? Don't forget that at the end of temps, you have P and S that are silent, okay? Repeat after me. J'ai pas le temps là, tu vois? Bon, bon means good or well. You have this nasal on. Repeat after me. Bon, bon. Again, bon. Good. It can be used as a regular adjective like un bon gâteau, un bon gâteau, a good cake. But it is also short for, well, that's enough, let's stop talking too much. As in, bon, on y va? Well, are we finally going to go? Bon, on y va? Repeat after me. Bon, on y va? Again, bon. On y va? Here you can notice the liaison between on and i. Okay? On y va. The n becomes heard. On y va. Repeat after me. Bon, on y va? Good. We also have a ah bon, a ah bon, oh really? A ah bon? Or even a ah bon? Oh, okay. Ah bon. 
Eh bien, eh bien, is a very short filler to mean well. It is not used that often actually, because in everyday conversation, French people will often use an informal, degraded pronunciation for eh bien. We would use ba or ben. For example, we would say ba oui, well, yes, obviously, or ba non, well, no. Ba non, ba non, y'a pas, j'vois pas. Hein? Un, un, that sounds like one in French, un, doesn't sound very elegant, yet it is one of the most common French fillers. It can mean, what did you say? Un, un, or it can mean, is it? Or right, for example, vous m'attendez pour partir, hein? You are waiting until I arrive so we can live together, okay? Yes. Vous m'attendez pour partir, hein? And as usual, because it's a question, the voice goes up. Repeat after me. Vous m'attendez pour partir, hein? Vous m'attendez pour partir, hein? One last time. Vous m'attendez pour partir, hein? You can also use it for an order or a warning. Fais attention, hein? Be careful, all right? Repeat after me. Fais attention, hein? Again, fais attention, hein? And you can even use it as a pure filler. For example, Ah, c'était ça. Oh, that was it. Here, it doesn't mean anything. You're just carrying an emotion. Repeat after me. Un. It sounds exactly the same as one, remember? Un. Un. <coughs> Quoi means what in French? Repeat after me. Quoi? 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 In French, you will use it a lot. Even for a simple quoi? What? What did you say? Quoi? Well, in informal spoken French, on top of its usual meaning, it's also used as a filler. It can mean, come on, or that's all. For example, j'ai juste fait une erreur, quoi. I only made a mistake, that's all. Repeat after me. J'ai juste fait une erreur, quoi. Again, j'ai juste fait une erreur, quoi. Another example. Mais écoute-moi quoi? But listen to me. Come on. Mais écoute-moi quoi? Repeat after me. Mais écoute-moi quoi? Mais écoute-moi quoi? Good. Genre means gender in French, but it can also mean a kind of. When it is used as a filler in French, it means as if or like. For example, genre, tu connais Mathieu. As if you knew Mathieu. Stop lying. You have this idea of something's wrong here. Genre, tu connais Mathieu. Another example. J'étais là, genre, j'attends le bus, quoi, et alors... That's a little bit more difficult. It means I was there like I was simply waiting for the bus, you know, and then and then you tell the story. But you have this idea like I was just there and something happened. Again, j'étais là, genre j'attends le bus, quoi, et alors? Here there are lots of fillers because the person is going to tell an anecdote or a big story and they're setting the context, and they're speaking, so they're hesitating a lot. That's why there are lots of fillers, and I wanted to show you this example on purpose. Genre is more common among younger people, just like, like in English, I assume, but you can hear it in everyday French. Non, mais, is my mom's 
favorite filler words. It means no but, and you can use it at the start of almost any sentence in a conversation. This is the same as you would in English. Non, mais on peut partir demain sinon. No, but I mean we could leave tomorrow instead. Non, mais on peut partir demain sinon. It's fine, but you can also remove it like you would in English without losing any kind of information and you will sound much more assertive. You don't need to weaken your words or apologize for what you have to say, mom. So repeat after me. Non, mais. Non, mais. Non, mais oh! Comment tu parles de ton père? Finally, voila is my favorite filler word. It means there it is or and it's done. Here the accent doesn't impact your pronunciation. Voila. Voila. Good. It's short, it sounds good, and you can use it to agree with someone or put weights on your words. For example, voila, c'est ça. Yes, that's it. Repeat after me. Voila, c'est ça. Voilà, c'est ça. A bit faster. Voilà, c'est ça. Again. Voilà, c'est ça. Good. Another example. On a décidé comme ça et voilà. We made that decision and that's all. We're sticking to it. On a décidé comme ça et voilà. Repeat after me. On a décidé comme ça et voilà. Again, on a décidé comme ça et voilà. And finally, voilà can be used as the final word to a long speech. Et hey, franchement, voilà. And voilà, now you can use everyday French filler words. Félicitations, congratulations. I made a special playlist for you today. Dive deeper into a very specific French filler with many meanings, which is quand même, and learn more about other spoken French essentials, such as dropping the ne, cutting the e, uh, and even cutting the end of some French words. I made a special playlist right here for you. Click here on your screen, and I will see you in the next video. Allez, à tout de suite!